So just before I go into solution stoic, which is really going to be mixed stoic, I'm going to recap all the different ways to get moles. And you need to keep the data given in the question straight in terms of the category. So gravimetric stoic, when we weigh things out, we get their masses. Uh, we need to get moles from mass divided by molar mass. It doesn't matter the state. This could be a pure solid, which is the most common format. It could be a pure liquid, which we almost never use, or a pure gas, which shows up a fair bit. Okay. So if you know you have 10 grams of methane gas, you're not using PVTs. Okay. If you have 10 grams of pure methane, you're taking the mass over the molar mass. If you have a solution, you're going to get moles from concentration and volume. It's a mount concentration. It's the type of concentration that we use in science. So this is how many moles do you have per liter? So we have to watch our units. Our volume has to be in liters, but most questions use milliliters because that's the most common measurement. Okay? Most devices in a chemistry lab are milliliter uh, unit measuring devices. What we'll use the least is gases, where we know their pressure, volume, uh, and temperature. So PV over RT is how we could get moles. And you should be well used to the statement that you have to use Kelvin temperature units. Okay. All your other units are going to have to match the universal gas law constant R. So that's how you can remember uh, the others. So as I roll through, I'll be using whatever strategy is appropriate given the information in the question. Start of practice. So we're asked to determine the mass of precipitate when 50 mils of one mole per liter sodium sulfate reacts with 25 mils of one mole per liter barium nitrate. So as soon as I see concentrations, my brain is thinking some solution stoic, concentration and volume to get our moles. But then the question is asking about mass, so we're going to have to use our pure substance strategy with the heart of our question. Okay. So I solve all of my stoic questions with a visual aid of an ice table. I think it's a nice way uh, to see the data. So we're asked the mass to precipitate. I didn't label the state. So the first thing I'd want to do is figure out where am I trying to get to, and then I'll look at where I need to start. Sodium nitrate is the first product. Now, I remember from our solubility table that every nitrate is aqueous. I don't even go look it up. And I'm not going to look that up. So I'm expecting the barium sulfate to be our aqueous chemical. And when you find sulfate in your table, your solubility table in your Alberta Chem 2030 data booklet, barium 2 plus is in fact on the bottom row. It is slightly soluble. That's going to be our precipitate. So this is the goal. I want to figure out how many moles of barium sulfate I'm going to get. Where can I start? Well, I'm not sure. I've got both chemicals. I'm going to have to figure out the limiting reagent. So this is an excess limiting type of question. I'm going to get moles of both. Okay. I recognize that I have sol a solution, a concentration and a volume. So I'm going to use N is C times V. Moles for our uh, sodium sulfate, 1.00 moles per liter times, I have to convert the 50 mils into liters. I'm using 
using that information. I divided my volume by my volume by a thousand and I get 0 0.05. Now I'm not going to write my units in the ice table just for space. I'm going to write them once up above and it declutters the visual ice table. I encourage you to write in the moles on your paper where you have more space. So that could be our limiting reagent. We're not sure. I'm going to have to look at barium sulfate. It's another solution, same concentration, but a different volume, 25 mils, and I turn that to liters. And my units are just a mole circled. So what's going to run out first? Well, this is a, an easier limiting excess. They're a one-to-one -one ratio, our two reactants. So the lower one is going to run out first. So that's our red. Our barium nitrate is going to limit the reaction. We got way, we got almost, we got double actually what we need of the sodium sulfate. So this is our limiting reagent. All of those 0 0.025 moles are going to react away. I don't care about that excess reagent column. I figured out a column so I can use my stoic to figure out how much moles barium sulfate I'd have. Before we've mixed anything, we wouldn't have any barium sulfate initially. I might change. Multiply by one, barium sulfate, divide by one, barium nitrate. So the change is numerically the same. It's just a product being made. So we have our moles of barium sulfate. Uh, now we just need to figure out how heavy that is. What mass is it? Okay. So the mass. This will be a barium sulfate. Mass is molar mass times moles. So one barium, one S and three O's has a molar mass of 233.40 grams per mole times our moles. Didn't quite have room to fit my mole units in, but they're on the top of the moles and the bottom of the molar mass. And I'm now at the end, so I'm kind of looking at my significant figures. And three were all through this. The molar mass was five, and I'm going to round my answer to 5.84 grams. So that's our mass of precipitate. So not that different from previous stoic. Our second question will have all the same type of strategies, but we're going to have a little bit more solution stoic. Uh, use that concentration as N over V a little bit more than we did in this one. So really similar, mostly similar here. What volume of a quarter mole per liter hydrochloric acid would be required to react with 14 mils of half a mole per liter sodium carbonate? We don't have an equation here, so the first thing you're going to do is need to write it out. Hydrochloric acid is going to react with sodium carbonate. Carbonate is 2 minus, so I need two sodiums. 
this is going to be an acid base reaction, but ultimately I encourage students to just think of it as a double replacement where my hydrogen is going to pair up with my carbonate and the sodium with the chloride. So we end up needing two hydrogens to pair up with the two minus carbonate. And then you really have to let go of the fact that there's two sodiums in our second pairing. Sodium is plus one, chloride is minus one, so you only need one of each in a formula unit. That's not balanced, we wouldn't be doing correct stoic. We have more hydrogen at the end, double in fact. So I have to double my hydrogen. So we need two HCl, that double my chlorine, and that will get two chlorine or a chlorine, two chlorine at the beginning and two chloride at the end. Now we can set up our ice table and start figuring out how we're going to tackle this. So I'd read the question, get the chemistry, and then reread the question to figure out where do we want to go in our ice table. What volume of hydrochloric acid? So we're asked something about this. We're going to need that column. Would be required to react with sodium carbonate. That's the other reactant. This is one of those questions where we're going from one, react, one reactant to the other. We're figuring out the minimum volume. It doesn't say minimum in the question, but that's what we're going to solve for. Okay. What volume could we put in that the HCl runs out and the sodium carbonate runs out? Okay. They're both going to zero. Okay. The same thing we did in gravimetric stoic when we asked about what mass of the other reactant was needed. So we're going to do a bunch in moles, and then at the very end, we can use our concentration as N over V to get rearrange it to get the volume. Okay. So we're asked about hydrochloric acid. We're going to have to start with sodium carbonate. That's where we know enough to get the moles. I'm going to do my work over underneath the products because I don't need to solve anything over there. So moles of sodium carbonate, moles is C times V. Okay. I've got milliliters in a concentration, so I'm using uh, solution mole strategies. 0 0.50 moles per liter times, I need 14 mils in liters. Milli to the base is a divide by 1,000. Seven millimoles or point zero zero seven moles. And I will just write my units next to my ice table, same reason for okay. so we're gonna assume all of those react away and we're gonna figure out how many moles of HCl are needed. And it's not the same numerical amount. Got to do a little stoic, but kind of backwards. Multiply by the HCl we want has a coefficient of two, where the sodium carbonate, which is the given or starting information, is a one. Okay. Our equation tells us we need double the HCl compared to the sodium carbonate. So you've left that C times V calculation in your calculator. You've just doubled it. So how many moles do we need? That's the minimum amount of moles that we need to put in. We're not done. We're at volume. So we don't want to turn that into a mass. We, we're going to do some solution stoic. Okay. We have moles. We have a concentration. 
Let's see. So concentration is N over V. Question one, volume. Okay, we're doing all this for HCl. Our ice table told us the moles. The question told us the concentration. I'm not going to show my work, but when you rearrange that for volume, you move it up to the other side, you move concentration down to the right, you get N over C. The moles we just figured out. Let's double the other reactant. Quarter of a mole per liter from our question. Moles and moles cancel. We're going to get units in liters. And to two significant figures, 0 0.056 liters. Now on a test or quiz, you might be asked for milliliters. If you're doing this as a pre-lab, you're going to use a graduated cylinder. You'd often want it in mils. So this is a multiply by 1,000. So 56 milliliters is the minimum you'd have to pour out. If you wanted this to be an excess reagent, you'd just pour a little bit more. Okay. So that's uh, our second solution stoic. Okay. Both have uh, analogies, similarities to what we did in gravimetric stoic.